this is Hana and thanks for clicking this video. In this video, I want to give some tips on how to get a H1 because that's why you clicked on this video. And just like my other um, how to get a H1 in biology video, I want to divide this video into giving some background and then giving my tips on um, the on how to get a H1 in physics and then maybe concluding at the end with some of my thoughts. So let's jump into this, this video and if you like this video, then comment, like and subscribe. So physics. For me, physics, unlike biology, was a bit hard for me. Even though I enjoyed both subjects, maybe biology more than physics, I still struggled a bit in physics, which is why I jumped from a H3 to a H1 when I repeated. And I just did a few things differently when I was repeating to get me to a H1 from H3, which I think is a huge improvement, I guess. I had done IGCSE's physics just like biology because in the British system, there is biology, chemistry, and physics for junior research rather than just the subject science. And my knowledge of physics and chemistry and biology was more than a typical Irish student in junior cert and even in leaving cert. Even though I did do the curriculum of GCSEs for physics, by the time I went to fifth year, I my knowledge for physics was not was not more than a typical Irish student because I didn't do anything else for physics. I only did um, leaving cert physics after that. Because as you remember from biology video, I actually did SAT biology, which gave me a lot more information in biology than the Leaving Set curriculum, which helped me in when it comes to the Leaving Set exam. But for uh, physics, I didn't do the SAT physics, so I only used the Leaving Set physics books and curriculum to do study for physics. So for physics, I didn't have that much of a prior knowledge or background knowledge, so that's why maybe I guess I, I guess I struggled more in physics than in biology. Now let's jump into the tips or advice that I have for getting a H1 in physics. So first of all, let's start with um, books. In physics, I, unlike biology, I didn't use any revision books. I personally never found any of them good enough. And unlike biology, where the majority of content is learning, in physics, it's mostly calculations and concepts. I didn't think there would be any other revision book that would be able to concisely explain those concepts any better than a book. So for physics, I used uh, this this book, um, this textbook, um, when I was repeating. The first time I did my leaving cert, I used the purple book. I don't know if I have it still, but uh, I will put a picture up somewhere here. And I personally do not think that that book was as good as this book. And I think this book has enough and really good information for you to understand some really complex physics concepts and really good experiment um, procedures. So I think if you ever are in fifth year or going into fifth year and you have an option to buy one or other, I would recommend buying the black one and not the purple one. I personally did not find that it had enough information nor did it explain things better than this one. So now when it comes to note making, uh, I really made, uh, unlike biology, I actually made notes in physics because obviously the book was huge and not every information was needed after you have understood the concept. So I will go through the chapter and really pick all the important information and write it down in my notebook. And I will do that as I'm going along and not doing that at the end. Um, and as you can see by my tips, you can understand that majority of my tips kind of have the same underline or same thing repeated again and again, because I think some of these basic and important skills, if you use them in any subject, you will get a H1 or a H2 in any of those subjects. So uh, something like taking notes or doing exam questions as you're going along is so much important than cramming it or leaving it to the end. So if I was doing a mechanics chapter, so for example, if I was doing light in school, I will spend the evening, that evening or the next few days making notes for light. As I'm going along, I will ask the teacher what is important in a chapter or what's not important if I need that information. And I will use that, I will, I will use that to gauge what's important and I will then make notes of that. Uh, also moving to the experiments. Experiments in chemistry and physics are a whole other level. They are not like biology. In biology, you can learn of the experiments from the region Book or textbook it isn't it's not that important like they are simple they're not that complicated but experiment for physics and chemistry require a lot of attention and they make up bulk of the exam as well they make up like a good enough amount of the sections in the exam so you need to give them extra extra attention so for f physics especially i i really implore you to make a really good experiment book 
that is so important physics for chemistry and biology i ended up just learning from the textbook but for physics i learned all of my experiments from my from my experiment book rather than going to the textbook because i wrote really really good experiments in my um in my experiment book yeah those experiments in the experiment book included information that was asked in the exam that was not in the book so and that's why it's so important for you to do the questions as you're going along to do the exam questions as you're going along because then you can see oh my god they asked this particular thing about this experiment but this is not in the book i will just write it down in a sticky note or just like a point beside this experiment in my experiment book so my experiment book had really concise and all the important bits about the experiment in that little book like everything in it so when and when time came for learning experiments i just used that now i before i jump into actually the tips particular tips about physics i really want you to understand this one important thing the majority of biology is facts which are harder to learn but easier to understand for example human physiology human heart it's a fact human heart has four cha chambers i mean there can be exceptions to these fa to this fact but it's a fact it's easier to understand but harder to learn you have to repeat it okay this is atrium this is ventricle this is right left it's harder to learn but so much easier to understand but physics and chemistry majority of them are built on concepts concepts are harder to understand but easier to learn it's very hard to understand how light works how light um is made up of different colors how the speed of light is calculated what the basic component of light photon is but once you understand the concept of light you're not going to forget about it it's so easy to learn but it takes a bit time to understand so when you're approaching chemistry or physics you have to really hammer down the concepts which requires a lot of energy and effort to learn those concepts hammer them down because once you do there it's all going to be worth it you're going to not forget about it ever again so if you approach physics and chemistry in the in the mindset of i have to learn these basic concepts and then go to the advanced concepts i have to understand these concepts it will be easier for you to then do better in physics and chemistry so do not and a lot of people the same goes for maths a lot of people fall into the trap hole of doing exam questions learning off a method of doing a calculation or learning off an answer when the reality is in physics and chemistry that's not going to help you because that calculation will change or that question will change but once you understand the concept you will be able to adapt yourself to those changing questions and calculations which is going to serve you so much better than learning off a way of doing a calculation and if that calculation particular calculation doesn't come up you're screwed now i will jump into particular um uh, tips for physics again before i go to any further exam questions exam questions exam questions i want you to treat exam questions i use as you treat food or netflix you know go back to them again and again and again and learn to use them effectively not just do them for the sake of doing them if you still are confused about how to use exam questions how to use exam papers and you want me to make a more detailed video comment down below and then i will try to make a more detailed um video on how i approach exam questions but the basic thing is try to do exam questions as you're going along and try to do as many as you can and try not to jump to the marking scheme right away try to do them from your memory or try to do them with the with notes and then mark them it's so important for you to judge whether your knowledge is, is sufficient or whether your notes are sufficient because once you're going to mark those uh, those uh, answers you're going to know okay this is what i don't have this is what i don't know and then please analyze your mistakes again and again if you're just doing your exams and just going on to the next exam oh i got a h3 next one i got a h1 but you don't know why your grade is fluctuating or why is it so random you know you need to understand why you are doing some mistakes and not do them and guarantee a good grade moving on physics is so so important that you start early calculations are not something that you can cram they're not something you can learn a week before or like two days before the exam they require again there are concepts physics is made of concepts and concepts cannot be crammed they have to be understood deeply so deep learning has to be involved when learning concepts so i really advise you to not give in to the the habit or power of procrastination and to resist it and try to do as hard as you can if you still have not managed to do, do you know start as hard as you can then then start now it's be, starting now is better than never starting just start now 
doesn't matter, but try to start as early as you can. E-learning is really important when it comes to physics. Don't just rely on the book. If you don't understand a concept written in words and you think the book is not explaining well, go to YouTube, go to, go to a website that you like, go to, go to Google and search the concept, search what you don't understand. Maybe someone else has a better way of teaching you, has a better way of targeting your learning, has a better way of making you understand. So don't just sit there and be like, ah, oh, it's so hard to understand electricity, I can never get it. Try as many ways as possible. And if that still doesn't help you, then at least you tried everything. At least you said, I've done whatever I could do. So don't just rely on one method. Try to explore more methods, especially online learning. It will really help you if it help you visualize. It's so important that you understand the fundamentals of physics before you jump into the advanced physics. And then you're like, what's going on? I don't get it. And maybe I'm just not born to get it. No, instead of criticizing yourself or the books or the curriculum, maybe go back and do something that's within your control, which is learning a different way. So if you f find that you cannot get mechanics, you absolutely cannot get electricity. My tip for you is stripe it down, leave it all those advanced chapters and focus on basic chapters first. And then if you once you have understood those basic chapters really well, then go to the advanced chapters. An example will be in physics, the basic concept is manipulating or substituting a formula. Once you have understood all the rules of manipulating a formula or substituting in a formula, how to change the formula as it goes to the equal sign or from the from right hand side to left hand side, once you've mastered that, then if you have to substitute or if you have to manipulate a complex formula or maybe advanced formula like resistors in parallel or any electricity formula, then you will find it so much easier to do, to do those calculations if for example one of the things is missing then you will know how to manipulate the equation that will make that will make doing equations really easy for you another example is if you understand the fundamentals of, of resistance really well and then understand the fundamentals of, of uh, resistance in, in series and parallel, then the calculations for them become easier. In physics, you have to understand things before you can uh, write them off by heart. So if you find a chapter really hard and you think it's so impossible for you to do, maybe sit down and think, why do you find it hard? Is it because you actually don't understand it? Is it because the fundamentals in that chapter are wrong for you? Sit down and, 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 and explore why that chapter might not be working for you. And you will most probably find that either your fundamentals are not, are not solidified or you are not understanding the concepts really well. A good news for physics is physics thankfully like, <laughs> Thankfully, the examiners are not as harsh in physics exams as chemistry. So you will get by with a lot more tweaking and a lot more things than in chemistry. And that's why you might find that it's a lot easier to get a H1 in physics than in chemistry. And I mean, it's not that there, it's not that physics is easier. I mean, physics is hard. At least in my personal experience and the people around me, we found that getting a H1 in physics was so much more possible after you have done the basic stuff in physics. That means that do as many questions as you can and don't be scared of questions like mechanics because even if you think you cannot do them, attempt as much as you can and you might be surprised at how many marks you end up gathering from that from the question. So an example would be my friend uh, when she did the, the leaving cert the first time, she also repeated with me, she said that she did the mechanics question on a whim. It was just a last minute thing because she didn't have all the options. She could not do any other question except mechanics. and. She hit in mechanics and she came out of that exam and she, when she went to saw her exam in the, in August, she saw that she got 52 out of 56 marks in an, in a question that she didn't want to do and she knew she was going to fail. We were so shocked how, how you might misjudge a question and your ability and be scared of it, but you might actually do well in it. So don't be scared of questions and try to attempt as many as you can. Don't leave blanks. You never know where you get the marks from. And for physics, tests are so important. Try to examine yourself as much as you can. Don't waste the tests in the class. Use them to your advantage. Use them to examine yourself. Use them to understand what you're doing wrong. And don't be afraid to ask teachers why you are not understanding something, why some calculations are not working for you. Ask questions. Don't be scared of that. They are there to help you. Last but not least, some chapters that I think are really important for physics are mechanics, uh, electricity, electromagnetism, and waves. Also, don't forget the option questions. I 
my person did particle physics and I really recommend everybody to do particle physics. So much easier, simpler. So these are my tips for um, how to get a H1 in physics and I really hope people not be scared of this 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 subject. It's, it is very enjoyable to do. really want pe more people to enjoy this subject and love it as much as I, I do and um, have a good experience with it. It's not as scary as people make it to be. I personally really enjoyed doing it and, and the experiments are so fun to do. They are so enjoyable to do in class. Like I always had a blast doing them. So yeah, this is it. Um, I hope you enjoyed video this video and I hope you learned something from this video. Thanks for the support. Thanks for subscribing to my channel and if you are new here, please subscribe <laughs> and follow my Instagram if you want. Um, I'm not that good at like posting on Instagram but you know, I'm learning as I'm going along and I'm gonna also make the chemistry video and if you want any other video or any other topic, comment down below and I'll try my best to make one and help you guys. See you in the next video and bye! Feeling good. Hey, feeling good.